Welcome to the West Clinic Hellness to Wellness Podcast. This is taking people that are sick, out of hope, frustrated or confused with their medical recommendations, or are searching for another pathway to health, and it's finding incredible patient outcomes of people just like you. And it's not just saying it. You can see and hear the hundreds of patient success stories on our website, blog, YouTube channel, and of course, right here, coming at you with over a century of patient success in the West Clinic system. Here's your host, Dr. Jason West. Hey guys, thanks to Keith for doing our, our nice little overview of the Hellness to Wellness podcast and what that means. Like we're trying to take people that are living here and getting them to live up here. And tonight's program is a little bit off the cuff. It's something that happens to almost everyone. It's what happens to your energy levels, right? And your energy levels are frequently disappearing after a chronic illness, um, after shingles, after a flu, after, you know, significant trauma, like something like that. People just don't get their mojo back very well. And that's what today's program is going to be on is it's all about getting your energy levels back. And I'm Dr. Jason West. I'm your host on this journey. I'm inviting you to go with me to talk about getting your energy back after something happened. And, and it can be a sickness. It can be an emotional event. You know, it can be a pet dying. It can be a, you know, a near miss death experience. I've seen that affect a lot of people, but also it's just the stuff that's floating around where people are like, man, I got sick. And then I just didn't get over it. And so, and by the way, if, if you're picking us up a little bit later, um, we've got a free book on energy levels and stuff that's coming out. And it usually comes out about seven o'clock on Dr. Jason West Live. So everything that we're talking about, I just want to give everybody the heads up on that we have a bunch of resources and stuff for us. And if you haven't seen us before, remember we're talking about things like, you know, boosting your metabolism. We did that a couple of weeks ago. We did metabolism cheat codes. We've done, uh, you know, hair loss after the pandemic, and now we're talking about uh, getting your energy levels back. And so, you guys, welcome to the program. I'm so excited to be able to share what we've learned over the last 107 years, and it's all about getting your mojo back after getting beat up. So this is the most common secondary complaint that I see with people. And what I mean by secondary complaint, everybody's coming in most of the time for pain, or for autoimmune diseases or Lyme disease, or they want to know what they can do to support aggressive medical interventions, whether it's cancer or chemotherapy, of how we can help them to be as healthy as possible, whether getting some medical treatments. And, and, and invariably, when you ask them, well, why did you come in? And they'll say, well, my shoulder hurts, or my back hurts, or my, I can't get my stomach right, or I've got you know some chest pain, and they've ruled out heart problems, and I just don't feel right. And then I'll say, well, what else is wrong? Well, I don't feel good. I'm tired. And it's such a common problem is running out of energy. And I tell people, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to take my phone as an example. Like, I think we've got like 100 units of energy in life. I'm just going to use this hypothetically. And you use like, you know, 60 units to live and you use 20% to work and you use 20% for your relationships. And then if you have something that alters your life, like being sick or getting run down or running into an infection and having Epstein-Barr or the, the uh, virus that's floating around the country. Like if you get that, then how do you get your energy back? And so that's what I wanted to, to tell people about. It's just an information sharing program. And I've got some ideas on how to do that. So the first thing that I talk about, you know, when I first started practice, I thought everything was biomechanical or it was hormone related, or it was because, you know, something didn't connect in the urea cycle or the Krebs cycle or the electron transport chain or something like that. And now I've been in practice over two decades. It's all about electrons and energy and oxygen. And when the cells don't work right, people don't work right. So when we run out of cells at the very, you know, bottom of this process, we run out of energy. Like as we break down the molecules of glucogen, we break it down into a process called aerobic glycolysis. And if oxygen is there in that process, we generate energy. This is why it's so important to move because it helps with, with energy. And it's so important, like with, with the pandemic that's going around, so many people are having residual lung problems that it's just 
really, really decimating to them because we can't get oxygen in the system. You can't get oxygen in the system. Guess what your byproducts are? It's no longer energy. It's a little sliver of energy and it's pyruvate and it's lactic acid. And this is why so many people hurt with, you know, mixed connective tissue disease and fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome or the, or the new name for that, <coughs> excuse me, which is myologic encephalopathy or, or chronic muscle and brain is because they're generating acid all the time. So it, if I go to the gym and I go to work out and I haven't done, you know, bench press for a while, or if I haven't done upright rows for a while and, and I'm lifting and I, my body runs out of oxygen, what happens is the muscles start generating lactic acid. And it is, if you keep using them, you generate more and more lactic acid and you get sore. Well, this is what happens so many times, not only with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, but it happens with people that are coming off a sickness. They don't have those oxygen reserves. And so they're generating acid. And so I tell people, look, if you get diagnosed with one of these a diagnosis that's hard to, it's a diagnosis of exclusion, like a fibromyalgia or some of these other, you know, myologic encephalopathy. It is a lonely endeavor. And what I mean by that is you have your parents telling you one thing or your kids telling you something and your neighbor telling something and, and then the kid at the, the health food store and your trainer, someone at the gym and someone at your church, all these people trying to, trying to help you, but they don't understand what's happening. And so it's, it's kind of sad and kind of amusing when you see opposites attract. You'll have patient you have couples that'll come into the office and one spouse will be sick. And then in and many times they're like, look, I eat healthy. I get enough water. I don't eat weed. I don't eat sugar, et cetera. And uh, they're like, why, why is this happening to me? And then the, the, their spouse, it's frequently amusing to see. They're like, well, I'm bulletproof. Like I eat Twinkies and licorice and, and you know, a six pack of coffee. Nothing's wrong with me. Like they just need to toughen up. Now, now I'm being a little bit sarcastic in that exchange, but opposites attract. And some people are made out of super glue and some people are made out of Elmer's glue. And I try to tell the patient's spouse that you usually, you know, and again, it not always happens, but sometimes it does. Look, when you go to the gym and you get tired of working out, this is how the patient feels all the time. Part of it's genetics. Part of it's we don't now have an oxygen. And part of it is because we have lingering infection. And so this happens a lot with like the cold sore virus. It'll come out and it's always in our system. Like I, like the literature is like almost 100% of people have the herpes simplex one virus, which is the cold sore virus. And, and there's a lot of people that never, ever have an outbreak. And then there's other people that they have a pH change. You know, they'll have a hormone cycle or they'll get out into the sun or they get really stressed and keep bam, they get all these lesions around their lips or inside their mouth. And that virus comes out of the lattice of the nerves and it affects the tissue. And when the body kind of catches up a little bit, the nerve, the virus kind of goes away and it goes back and it retreats into the nerve. It's always in there. So like this latent infection. And this is what happens so many times with these chronic viral infections, Epstein-Barr, West Nile virus, cytomegalia virus, uh, parvo virus, the chickenpox virus that sometimes can cause shingles later on, the herpes simplex one virus. Herpes simplex four is, you know, the Epstein-Barr virus that causes so much debilitating fatigue. Well, how do you get over that? And then what happens to your energy? So I really believe that when you're sick and you get run down, what happens is you go and you start borrowing things from other organs and tissues in the body. So you'll go over and you'll borrow um, minerals and stuff from the muscles and then the muscles get tired. Then you go to the thyroid and, and you will look at the T4 and the T3 levels, your body borrows them. And, and I kind of think it's a Robin Peter to pay Paul thing. Like it'll come in. And then what happens is, is the body's like, well, I'll put it back when I get it back. And, and a lot of times because of stress and lifestyle and genetics, like people don't put it back. And then what happens is it goes from the thyroid and then their adrenals are get exhausted. So if they stand up too fast, they get lightheaded or they'll get a racing heart and then they get diagnosed with POTS disease or they get diagnosed with the underactive the thyroid, which I think are all secondary to the biggest problem, which is we don't got enough energy and, and how do we improve the energy? So I just wanted to give you guys some guidelines and some, some recommendations. And obviously this doesn't substitute for a doctor patient relationship, but the platform and the reason why we put this together is I just want to help as many people as possible. That's the mission statement of the Dr. Jason West live program. And so here's what I would recommend for getting energy back into the system. So, so the first thing is, 
is to the extent possible that we can get rid of cell trauma. We want to do that now. What is cell trauma? That's when everything starts to stick and, and things get bothered. And the biggest cause of cell trauma, in my opinion, is two things. Well, actually three things. The first one is, is I don't think people get enough water, which it's kind of like a broken record. Everybody hears me talking about water. It, it's an essential nutrient. It's so important to help people. That's number one, get, increasing your water intake. The second one is trying to get the bowels to regulate. Now, a lot of times constipation causes cell trauma, which causes guanidine buildup in the body, which causes stiff and achy joints and everything slows down. So if we can get the bowels to move a little bit better, it helps to reduce the toxin load and, and, and it really helps to help people's energy. Now, so sometimes people have the opposite and we did a, pro a program on too fast of bowels, which is diarrhea, and then too slow of bowels, which is constipation. And so I'm going to be a little bit focusing on the constipation part, but that is the liver and the gallbladder axis or system and how we can improve the bile salts, which makes your GI system faster. So some of the considerations for if you've got low energy levels and your bowels are a little bit slow, like I would encourage you to check out some bile salts. Now you can get these in a whole bunch of different places. They're available on the internet. Most health food stores have bile salts. Um, my favorite one is to use a beet leaf extract um, that helps to get the bowel moving. You want to stimulate the liver and the gallbladder system. And if you don't have a gallbladder, which is, a lot of people don't, you got to just make sure the liver is working right. So, so that's the first thing. Do a little bit of a tune. Drink a little bit more water is, and then reduce cell trauma. And then my favorite thing to get uh, uh, energy into the system is to donate electrons. So I tell people like, it's like a battery. What happens with your body is we have the set amount of energy that we get and then we apportion it through the day as we go through, okay, I'm gonna use 60% for work and I'm gonna need 20% for relationships and 20% for you know my hobby. Like you have a hundred units of, uh, of energy and it's important to start off the day with as much energy as possible. And so many times people don't start that, they accidentally put themselves or intentionally put themselves into a state of stress. And when they stress the body, the body releases dopamine, or excuse me, adrenaline and epinephrine and affects their dopamine centers. And so I had a perfect example of this, of a patient saying, look, I want to feel better. I'm stressed all the time, but I work better under stress. So if I put my body under stress, like I get a lot more done, but I don't feel very good. And I'm like, no, no, I, I understand. Like there's no judgments coming from me, but let me just tell you what's happening. When you abuse your body and a lot of people don't even recognize this, it releases these hormones that give you an energy. It's that fight or flight or faint or flee uh, mechanism. Like the, the F, like if I walked outside and I saw a bear or a snake or an anaconda, like all of a sudden they think like snakes scare me. So all I would have this huge rush of, uh, of adrenaline and my pupils would constrict and my bowels shut off, right? Because we want to portion that energy to the neuromuscular skeletal system so you can run away. This is why so many times when people have stress, their bowels don't work is because the body's thinking that there's a bear or a snake or a tarantula right in front of them. And this is easy to say and hard to do, but this is why it's so important to have a stress management system. And, and the first thing I tell people is like, find out something that you love that is a really good outlet for you in a 15 minute increment. And let's start getting that on your schedule. So let's start saying, look, you know, whether it's listening to music or prayer, or meditation, or gardening, or taking a walk, or taking a drive, um, or exercise. Like there's all of these different things, and there's no right or wrong for people. You just got to find out what it is for you, so that you can use that to start to decompress. And then I think the key to doing this is to get it on your schedule and make an appointment. Like for me, I really like. I'm, I'm reading a book right now called The Five A.M. Club. So my goal: I get up at five a.m. I meditate for twenty minutes. I read for twenty minutes. I exercise for 20 minutes and then this thing start at six o'clock. So I'm like, okay, I got to get this dialed in and this is my golden time. And, and I would make the argument for people like when you schedule this time to decompress and help with your stress levels so that you can get your energy back from, uh, from strong trauma or stress or physical stress or an infection or, or whatever happening and like get on your schedule. And then when people say, Hey, Jason, I need you to do this. I'm like, well, I have an appointment now. I don't really to say anything after that other than if people say, well, I really need to meet with you. I'm like, I have an appointment with the most important person in my life. 
and that's me. And I'm not trying to be narcissistic or selfish, but I just got to be grounded and I got to do some things that get my energy right in the morning so that I can do something. So going back, how do we get our energy belt levels back? One, drink some water. Two, uh, help with your bowels. Sometimes people need a little bit of bile salts. Um, I forgot to mention, like I use, uh, you can get this through our program. I use something called Gut Gold um, that you can get on the website. There's lots of places to get it. A, a bile salt helps your bowels to move a little bit faster. Then we want to start donating electrons to the body, removing stress levels. And my favorite electron source is vitamin C. So vitamin C is the most powerful electron donor in nature. So vitamin C, like it's my favorite vitamin. Of course, I say that about vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin B1, vitamin B5, B6, B9, vitamin, like the list goes on. But vitamin C is always my favorite because it donates electrons to the body. If your body's a battery, what happens is vitamin C is like the battery charger. And this is why it's so important to eat foods with vitamin C. Um, you know, kiwi fruit, I think is the highest. Um, being from the state of Idaho, I love the right kind of properly prepared potatoes. This is a shout out to my brother-in-law, Doug, who told me, hey, um, don't forget your roots and where you come from. And if we prepare potatoes the wrong way, that's a horrible food. The right way, they got a lot of vitamin C in them. Oranges, limes, uh, strawberries are all consideration, but vitamin C donates electrons to the body. It helps to charge you up. The other thing that I really like to help with energy levels is to get the bad guys out so, uh, of course, vitamin C puts it in. It's also a natural chelator to put out. But things like glutathione and alpha-lipoic acid, I love alpha-lipoic acid. I call it ALA, the supreme uh, acid in the office, because it helps to clean out your liver. And we just talked about how if you get your liver clean, it helps to get stuff out of the bowels, and that helps to get rid of cell trauma, which backs up and makes your body create acid. So alpha-lipoic acid is one of my very favorite things. I recommend it to people. Myself, I take about 600 milligrams a day of alpha lipoic acid. I'm a closet hypochondriac. I have all these people come in that are saying they don't have these different conditions and I want to help them, but I also be like, yeah, I don't want that. So I better, you know, increase my water level. And then I read about alpha lipoic acid, phosphatidylserine, glycerophosphocholine. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to get to those in just a little bit, but we, those are some really good things. Glutathione helps to get, poisons out of the system. Alpha lipoic helps to protect the nerves. It's really good for peripheral neuropathy and it helps to get things out of the system. And then the last, uh, not the last thing, but another thing to help get your energy levels back is you know, going through the list, uh, getting water, getting your bowels to move, vitamin C. And when people ask me about vitamin C dosages, I say, you know, take a lot. Now, the best source of vitamin C is your knife and fork. Like I think that is the best way to get it in your system. And that's the healthy and alive foods. Like I tell people, the closer your food is to the ground, the better it is for you. And so what does that mean? Like if you take a carrot out of the ground and it's full of beta carotene and vitamin A and everything, and, and you wash it off and you eat it, I think that's really healthy for you. Taking that same carrot and turning it into carrot cake is really far away from the ground. Like I don't think that's very good. So we want to make sure that the, the food's closest to the ground, but colorful foods like, you know, peppers and, and peaches and oranges and uh, again, strawberries and tomatoes, like all they have these wonderful sources of vitamin C. That's the best way to get vitamin C in your system. The second best way is to use something called food insurance. Now what food insurance is, it is um, the supplements. Now, sometimes I'll tell people, will be like, look, I don't need supplements because I get everything that I need from food. And I'm like, yeah, that might be true. Although like when we do studies on the soils and everything, like we don't have the minerals and the phytonutrients and stuff that we used to have in the soils that we had, you know, a hundred years ago and 50 years ago and everything else. And so I like to supplement and I just like a lot of vitamin C. Now the, the godfather of vitamin C line is Pauling. And then the second godfather, which is uh, Dr. Tom Levy, so you basically take vitamin C to bowel tolerance when your bowel start to get loose because if you get too much vitamin C, it's going to push everything out of the system, which is a pretty good suggestion for people. Like if you're having slow bowels, like let's just keep going on the vitamin C because it eventually it's going to push everything out and then you back off. So the, the RDA levels for vitamin C is 500 milligrams per day. I think in my opinion, that's way too low. Like that is the minimum levels that you need to be alive 
It is not the minimum levels to be healthy. And so I think a better measuring stick for that is what we call the optimal daily intake, the ODI. I think that's a way better measuring stick than the RDA, which is the recommended daily allowance. I like the optimal daily intake. And I think your vitamin C levels should be, you know, 1500 uh, minimum. So vitamin C, I think, really helps to get energy back in your system. Glutathione helps to get poisons out. Alpha lipoic helps to help your liver to be healthy. Um, the other thing that is so good is to put order in your system. You know, bodies really, really crave order. So many times people come in to the office and they say, I, my shoulder hurts or my wrist hurts or I can't go to the bathroom. And, and I hear what they're saying, but the, what they really mean is this, like I lost control, my arm doesn't work. Like I can't lay on my side. I can't put my shirt on. I can't drive. I can't hug my spouse. I can't throw baseball with my son or my grandson, or I can't, you know, not play golf or I can't fish. I can't sew. I can't you know, do the garden, all these hobbies. And so they're saying I hurt, but what they're really saying is like, it's preventing me from doing something. I lost the ability to do something. And, and one of the best ways to help people to heal is to give them control. And one of the best examples of this, like every Thursday or, or most Thursdays, we have a patient testimonial of someone coming in and we change their life. And if you look um, a couple of weeks ago on our channel, you'll see Lily's story who had totally lost control. She would go to bed when she was tired and she'd get up uh, when she was rested and she would out when she ate when she was hungry, which sounds really good. But that's not good. Like that's a recipe for illness and unhappiness. So I recommend, hey, get your body on a schedule. Go to bed at the same time, get up at the same time, um, try to eat at the same time. Be healthy. I think it, the body craves order and then it rewards you with a sense of control. You know, sometimes when people get sick, um, I, I hear this comment a lot. I just have an impending sense of doom, like something bad's going to happen. And we'll go through and she's, they'll come in and they'll be like, hey, look at these tests or this MRI or the CT scan. And, and uh, my doctor says, well, I can't really find anything. And so sometimes then the doctor will be like, well, it's all your fault. It's in your head. Let's give you a happy pill. Like, let's just make you feel better. And the patient say, I'm not depressed. I just don't feel good. And what's happening is, is they've lost control. So putting control back in your system is such a good way to get energy. And yes, it sounds boring. And, and I have high school and college students that come in and they look at me and they're like, you want me to go to bed, you know, at 10 o'clock on you know, Friday Um how totally prude can you be? And I'm like, no, I, I get it. Like I did 10 years in college and, uh, and I have, uh, you know, a 25, 23, 19, 19 year old sons. Like I know what they're trying to do from a social aspect. You don't have to necessarily do that, but here's the, here's the key. Here's what's really important. I think that if you want to stay up late and on the weekends, like I don't have an issue with that, just get up at the same time. So get up at the same time every single day. And then on Friday or Saturday or Sunday, like if you need to re repay your sleep debt, then take a nap. Like I think naps are really, really healthy. And when I was little, I hated that so bad. I resented, mom, my, man, my mom's going to make me take a nap. And now I'm like, ah, I would kill for a nap. Like that would be the greatest thing ever. So don't resent naps. I think they're really, really healthy um, for you. Okay. So um, here we go uh, with uh, getting all of this put together. So we're talking about how to get your energy levels back. So if you're just joining us and either on the live or if you want some more resources, you can pick that up at drjasonwest.live. My mission statement is to help as many people as possible to regain control and to be healthy, whether you're across the street or across the country or in a different country. I've got you know almost 25,000 subscribers on YouTube and we look at the Facebook thing, we're getting over you know 10,000 impacts every single show. And that's so encouraging and so exciting to tell people, look, this is how you can live your life here and not here. So today's show, we're talking about energy levels and just a real quick review. Number one for energy levels. If you've been sick and you haven't got uh, your mojo back, if you've had shingles, if you've had a viral infection, Epstein-Barr, if you've had a, uh, a near-death um, accident, I just had this happen last week. Patient came in, almost got killed on the side of the road by an out of control, another vehicle and their life flashed behind their eyes. And they were like, Hey, this is a couple of years ago. And you know, I have survivor's guild and everything. It doesn't always have to be an infection. And then your energy goes away. How do you get your energy back? Okay. Water getting, making sure your bowels are working as best as possible. Bile salts, increasing your vitamin C intake, protecting or getting toxins out of the system with, uh, you know, glutathione and alpha lipoic acid and, and then the, the, let's go into the mineral pathways. So 
a mineral that we, no one hardly ever talks about that it's so important for energy. So if you're struggling with energy from a sickness or emotional event or something like this, I hope that you will check out phosphorus. Okay, I love this, this uh, mineral. Phosphorus is an energy molecule of the body with some amazing, wonderful side effects. Now, I say side effects jokingly because side effects are, you know, frequently what happens with an over-the-counter medicine or prescriptive medicine. They'll say, here's the effect, and then here's some accidental effects. And, of course, I always feel like saying there's no such thing as side effects. There's only effects. Like you take something that only has an effect. There's no such thing as a side effect. It's just marketing. But here is one of the beautiful effects of phosphorus. Phosphorus donates electron or donates energy to the bottle, so body. So you have vitamin C that donates electrons. And then the next thing that's so good for that is phosphorus because phosphorus is part of the electron transport chain. It's inside of your cells, and this is what gives you energy. If you have a readily stores available of phosphorus, you will create these little molecules in the mitochondria called adenosine triphosphate or ATP. This is the powerhouse of the cell. It makes all cells work and it's dependent on phosphate. As the phosphorus, like as we use it, we cut off these molecules of phosphorus. We go from ADP to ADP to AMP. So adenosine triphosphate, adenosine diphosphate to monophosphate. This is the energy in the body. There's a lot of foods that you like your green leafy vegetables and broccoli and spinach and kale that have some phosphorus in it. I also really like two products that we have. One is called ATP Torch. One is called ATP Energy. There's another company that has a product called Food. But if you have access to phosphorus, and there's a lot of, of um, health food stores and stuff that have phosphorus, it really, really helps your energy levels. I think this is one of the most important things. It's literally fertilizer for your body. And here's some of the neat things. Like I think it's nearly impossible to overdose on phosphorus. And when I say that, there's always the extreme. Like too much of, of any good thing is bad. Like if you eat too much squash or too much carrots, guess what? You get orange. You get beta carotene uh, toxicity. And if you get too much iron, you get hemochromatosis and so it shuts off your organs. And if you get too much oxygen, like you, your body can't survive and you'll get like it's awful. So it's the same with everything else. But phosphorus is such an underrated mineral. And here's the other things. It's really good for bursitis and cataracts and um, osteoarthritis because that's calcium in the wrong place. And minerals have to be balanced. So you have calcium and you have phosphorus. And if they're in the right 10 to 1 ratio, and if you have calcium and magnesium and it's the right 4 to 1 ratio, like everything works right. And if you get too much calcium that is out in the bloodstream, you can get kidney stones, you can get cataracts, you can get bursitis, you can get osteoarthritis. Phosphorus helps to balance that. So not only does it have energy, but it helps to get calcium in the right place. It's really good for sticky blood. It's also really good for tartar on your teeth. At least these are the, my clinical observations. And this is probably about the time when I say, look, this is what I do when I work with people every day. And I see these, the reports that they come back. The statements haven't been evaluated by the FDA and all of that stuff. This is just my observations, but I absolutely love phosphorus. And then the next miracle mineral for low energy levels is magnesium. And it's really important that it's a soft absorbable magnesium. So many people know about it and then they take the wrong stuff. Like they take magnesium that's too hard. So magnesium glycinate and magnesium citrate are really good options and, uh, and considerations. So with that being in mind, here's kind of the, uh, the protocol for getting your energy back. Water, movement. I, I forgot to talk about movement. When you move, what happens is you pump the lymphatic system, like you get everything to get back into the circulation from, from your body. So when your skeletal muscles move, like your biceps and your quads and your calves and everything, like it squeezes the infection processing centers, also known as lymph nodes, so that it puts the poison back into circulation and goes to the liver and kidneys and gets eliminated. So when people aren't feeling very good, like to the extent possible, try to move a little bit more. I don't expect you to go out and run a marathon. I don't expect you to go out and uh, do an Ironman competition. But if you can move somewhat, and, and this is so common when people like, you know, I was laying in bed for a while, like, I just got to get up. I got to move. I got to go outside. I got to go on a drive. Like that's part of that innate drive to, to, to be healthier. Like it's a really, really strong drive. So movement's good. Um, vitamin C uh, pathways, 
uh, glutathione, alpha lipoic acid, phosphorus is really, really good. Um, uh, I, Steve asked me, what are the list of optimal daily intake for vitamins and minerals? We'll go over a little bit more of that inside of our Thriver program, which is our virtual office visits. And if you, if you guys are seeing benefit, if you want to work with me individually every Wednesday night at seven o'clock, I have virtual office visits for uh, the patients inside the office that we do this neat little program. Okay. Um, and then, then here's a couple things. Now we're going to have to have a part two on energy levels, but I'm going to try and, uh, and get to it quickly. The biggest energy drain that I see in people outside of poor lifestyle choices, which is not putting your body on a schedule and uh, su supplementing so much with, um, you know, fake uppers, you know, energy drinks, soda pop. Uh, I, I think granola bars are, are a horrible junk food. It's masqueraded or it's fake that, it, that it's healthy and, and there's there's too much additives and stuff. it's not that great for you. It's probably better than a candy bar or something, but we got to be careful with granola and energy bars. Like beside of that is a, a chronic infection. So here's how you, like this is a teaser for, for next week. Chronic infection is what happens when a bad guy comes into your system, usually the Epstein-Barr virus or the herpes simplex six or seven virus, I, I see those as the common culture. And what it does is your body gets used to it and doesn't respond. So the virus comes in your system and you can see this on a blood test. And what happens is a white blood cell count should be six to 8,000. That's a really healthy range. And you'll see people's white blood cell counts be low. You know, it'll be less than you know four, it'll be 3.7 or 4.2. So, so the immune system's down somewhere like 30 to 50%. And then there are these cells in the body, part of the white blood cells that fight bacteria and viruses and inflammation and allergies and parasites. So those are the white blood cell categories. Well, the guys that fight in infection, viral infections are called lymphocytes. When you see on a blood test, someone's white blood cell count go down and their lymphocyte count goes up. This is so easy to see. And, and if you have a blood test, just look at it. White blood cell count should be six to eight. Lymphocyte count should be 30% of your white blood cell count. And frequently it'll be like 39 or 42. I saw one the other day, it was 68. So what's happening is the body's trying to ramp up for an infection, but it's kind of like dogs. Like, we, uh, and here's what I mean by that. Like if when you have a guard dog to prevent theft, the bad guys, you know, they break into, into the house and I have a law enforcement friend. He said, I think the best alarm system is a dog. Like I've chased everybody barks and it's noisy and, Robbers are afraid of it. Like if dogs are really, really effective for that, for that if, if they do their job. Well, what if you have a dog that the bad guys pay and then it doesn't do anything and it sits there and it looks at people, hey, the jewels are over there and the safe's over there and the electronics is like, yeah, take what you want, right? That's what happens so many times with people's immune systems. Like the white blood cell count is low. The viral count goes way up. And here's what it does is it sucks your energy. And it goes back to something called cell mediated immunity. So there's two parts of the immune system. There's outside the cell we call humoral immunity. And that's basically where antibodies work. And that's kind of where the bacterial system is. And, and there's some options over there for simulating immune system antibiotics and some other things. Guess what? On the inside of the cell, it's called cell mediated immunity. And it's regulated by your thymus gland, which is the most neglected, misunderstood, and never talked about gland and the spleen. So in Chinese medicine, the blood reservoir, the spleen is so important for health. Those things aren't working. So you got to get those working to get your energy back. But the biggest cause of chronic fatigue, in my opinion, is unresolved immune system. It's when the guard dogs aren't chasing off the bad guys. And so the bad guys are stealing all of the good stuff that's in your house. So we're going to talk more about that next week. I appreciate everyone's comments on here, like stress management system, Hi, Sarah Power. Hi, Steve. Or like I just see, um, there's some really neat things on here. A stress schedule, your stress management. Um, I, <laughs> someone says, wait, what? Uh, carrot cake. Um, there's nothing wrong with carrot cake like it, you know, on your birthday, right? <laughs> and, and it's better to really, really work on healthy and life foods. I'm going to be back next week. We're going to be part two of what to do for energy after infection. I'm getting ready to go on work with my Thrivers program, which is our specific question and answer period. You can get to a virtual office visit with me every week. If you want to know some more about our program, please put something down in the comment. If there's a question that I can address in future lives, put it, uh, put it in here. 
that I can come back and I can pick up later. Um, it's so important so that people can live, not just survive. Like I keep saying that, like you want to live, you want to thrive. You just don't want to eat by. And that's the purpose of the program to help as many people be healthy as possible. That's why I talk about vitamin C and alpha puck and where to get it. You can get it through me, you can get it other places. I just want to make sure that you get it. I'm Dr. Jason West and the day's Dr. Jason West live program coming at you every Wednesday at six o'clock. If you need resources and the ebook and everything else, you can pick it up at drjasonwest.live. It's usually everything's there about seven o'clock on a replay. We'll see you guys next week. Here we go. Dr. Jason West. Here we go. Thank you for listening to the Hellness to Wellness podcast. Every week we're sharing stories of people beating their disease or restored hope, treatments most doctors don't even know about, and information you need to live your life at the highest level. Remember, live, don't just exist. Do us a favor. Please like the show and give us a rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It really helps to share the message of health and hope. For additional resources like booking appointments and free video masterclasses, check out www.drjasonwest.live. It's internet information you can trust. Here's to your energy, balance, and longevity. And we'll see you on the next Hellness to Wellness episode where you'll be saying, man, I feel good.